present value of any commodity is an important term to refer in today's frame of time. Something that worth a penny today might worth half penny tomorrow. Applied Finance has evaluated this issue and provided its solution by the name of present value. This entire tutorial is the second part of previous tutorial and also all about present value of a commodity. Let us check out the contents that we are going to cover in this presentation before diving more into it. This tutorial would be starting by throwing some lights over an application in which the present worth and future investment concepts of doing an MBA are measured. Another application subsequent to previous lectures are covered after it which is determining the refinancing of mortgage while perpetuity is discussed as fourth type of cash flow after it. A practical application is provided to explain the perpetuity by the name of valuing a console bond and then the last type of cash flow is explained. Let us look into another application to understand the time value of money in terms of that how much is an MBA worth? Assume that you were earning $40,000 per year before entering program and that tuition costs are $16,000 per year. Expected salary is $54,000 per year after graduation. You can invest money at 8%. For simplicity. Assume that the first payment of $16,000 has to be made at the start of the program and the second payment one year later. The present value of the cost is calculated to be $102,145. Assume that you will work 30 years after graduation, and that the salary differential, $14,000 equals $5,400. Will continue through this period, then the present value of benefits before taxes would be $157,609, while the ones that would be required to discount it back in two years would be $135,124. Thus, the net present value of getting a master's in business administration would be $32,979. Another application to us the time value of money is savings from refinancing the mortgage of your real estate. Assume that you have a 30-year mortgage for $200,000 that carries an interest rate of 9.00%. The mortgage was taken three years ago. Since then, assume that interest rates have come down to 7.50% and that you are thinking of refinancing. The cost of refinancing is expected to be 2.50% of the loan. This cost includes the points on the loan, assume also that you can invest your funds as 6%. Please note that a monthly payment based upon 9% mortgage rate, 0.75% monthly rate would be $1,609 while monthly payment based upon 7.50% mortgage rate. 0.625% monthly rate, would be $1,398. Now you can see how to save $211 in this scenario. The similar values can be adopted from your own mortgage cash flows and you can make savings for your future as well. A perpetuity is an annuity that has no end, or a stream of cash payments that continues forever. There are few actual perpetuities in existence, the United Kingdom, UK, government has issued them in the past, these are known and still trade as consoles. Real estate and preferred stock are among some types of investments that affect the results of a perpetuity, and prices can be established using techniques for valuing a perpetuity. Perpetuities are but one of the time value of money methods for valuing financial assets. Perpetuities are a form of ordinary annuities. The concept is closely linked to terminal value and terminal growth rate and valuation. It must be noted that A is annuity in the formula while R is discount rate. Let us consider real-time examples of perpetuity. UK government bonds, called consils, that are undated and irredeemable, like war loan, pay fixed coupons, or interest payments and trade actively in the bond market. 
very long dated bonds have financial characteristics that can appeal to some investors and in some circumstances, like long dated bonds have prices that change rapidly, either up or down, when yields change, either fall or rise, in the financial markets. A more current example is the convention used in real estate finance for valuing real estate with a capitalization rate, or cap rate. Using a cap rate, the value of a particular real estate asset is either the net income or the net cash flow of the property, divided by the cap rate. Effectively, the use of a cap rate to value a piece of real estate assumes that the current income from the property continues in perpetuity. Underlying this valuation is the assumption that rents will rise at the same rate as inflation. Although the property may be sold in future, or even the very near future, the assumption is that other investors will apply the same valuation approach to the property. A growing perpetuity is a series of periodic payments that grow at a proportionate rate and are received for an infinite amount of time. An example of when the present value of a growing perpetuity formula may be used is commercial real estate. The rental cash flows could be considered indefinite and will grow over time. It is important to note that the discount rate must be higher than the growth rate when using the present value of a growing perpetuity formula. This is due to the present value of a growing perpetuity formula being an infinite geometric series as explained in one of the following sections. In theory, if the growth rate is higher than the discount rate, the growing perpetuity would have an infinite value. An example of the present value of a growing perpetuity formula would be an annual cash flow of $1,000 that will continue indefinitely. This cash flow is expected to grow at 5% per year and the required return used for the discount rate is 10%. The equation for this example of the present value of a growing perpetuity formula would be a present value of $20,000. A growing perpetuity is a series of periodic payments that grow at a proportionate rate and are received for an infinite amount of time. An example of when the present value of a growing perpetuity formula may be used is commercial real estate. The rental cash flows could be considered indefinite and will grow over time. It is important to note that the discount rate must be higher than the growth rate when using the present value of a growing perpetuity formula. This is due to the present value of a growing perpetuity formula being an infinite geometric series as explained in one of the following sections. In theory, if the growth rate is higher than the discount rate, the growing perpetuity would have an infinite value. An example of the present value of a growing perpetuity formula would be an annual cash flow of $1,000 that will continue indefinitely. This cash flow is expected to grow at 5% per year and the required return used for the discount rate is 10%. The equation for this example of the present value of a growing perpetuity formula would be a present value of $20,000. An excellent example to understand growing perpetuity is about valuing a stock with growing dividends. Southwestern Bell paid dividends per share of $2.73 in 1992. Its earnings and dividends have grown at 6% a year between 1988 and 1992, and are expected to grow at the same rate in the long term. The rate of return required by investors on stocks of equivalent risk is 12.23%. It can be observed clearly that the present value of stock is $46.45.